Greetings. This is August 11th at approximately 11 a.m. and uh, lightning has gone through the Okanagan. There's a screen from Lightning Org and the links are below if you want to track and monitor lightning. It's pretty much in real time and there's three or four sensors up in the caribou so they're picking up strikes there. The story on the fire fronts has also been these meandering winds. Uh, we're looking at one kilometer in the 70 mile house area, but you can see on the terrain, there's a lot of variation. It might be coming from the south in one area, and then if you move five kilometers, it's coming from the north or the northwest. So overnight, there's been a lot of pressure on the perimeters. Uh, sparks have been uh, going outside the fire flanks and from pretty much all directions we're looking at the forecast screen right now on windy and there's a link below if you look on sunday uh there appears to be a wind event uh that may come in with some precipitation it could go up to above 40 kilometers an hour coming from the west northwest so uh, if you're on the opposite side of these fire planks, you want to consider uh, what the weather is going to be and if it's going to be blowing some of that uh, activity towards your direction. Here we're now looking at the NRC data for this morning. You can see the Wild Goose Lake fire on the left-hand side of your screen. Activity is being pushed towards the north. But then in the center of your screen, the fires east of 70 Mile House appear to have activity that's moving southward. We're looking at the 24-hour map uh, with the perimeters indicated. Uh, let's just go to the last 12 hours and as you can see, still a lot of very recent activity. And this is where some of these excursions of uh, heat have moved outside the perimeters. When we look at the six hour map, no activity showing at this time. However, recent activity may be obscured by smoke or cloud. We're zooming into the area east of Young Lake, about a kilometer and a half east, and uh, there has been growth. Uh, we are seeing some hot spots uh, just outside what was the general area, and it's moved closer to Young Lake. So there's been westward movement there. Now we're looking at the area around Sodium Lake, east of 70 Mile House. This is the 24-hour map. And rolling into the 12-hour uh, map, we can see a lot of activity, and some of those indications are moving further south towards the Bonaparte. Looking at the Wild Goose Lake fire, this is in the Big Bar area. Uh, the 24-hour map is showing a lot of intensity and random hotspots inside the perimeter. A lot of what appears to be controlled signatures going across the perimeter. And then on the western side, we see some uh, hotspots that have moved outside the perimeter. So again, these fires have activity all around the perimeters and they could move outside in any direction. We've now moved north. Uh, we're looking north of Horse Lake, south of Buffalo Lake. This is the area that recently came under evacuation order. I'm not seeing any hot spots at this time. And again, those could be obscured. But uh, I'm going to take it as a good sign that we're not seeing these large patches of infrared uh, accumulating in this area. Now we're moving further north, north of Canham Lake, uh, Wells Great Park. And again, you can see the activity. It's, it can be on all fronts. Uh, there's uh, hot spots that are being shown outside the perimeters. Uh, they're on the northwest side. They're on the southeast side. So they've moved, activity has moved outside the fire flanks and is appears to be in a lot of random patterns. Some of these can be uh, control strategies that are being employed by BC Wildfire in order to contain uh, further growth. But there is a lot of activity that's moving outside. This is a screen from the horsefly area. And now we're just jumping over to Quenelle. This is the fire that's uh, southwest of Quenelle. And uh, movement appears to be to the south and to the west. Uh, moving over, 
This is the area around Nazco, north of Nazco, and this activity ha appears to be moving to the southeast. Uh, a lot of random patterns with activity up to two kilometers outside those indicated perimeters. Now these aren't the same perimeters that you'll find on BC Wildfire or on the regional maps. These are just computer calculations, so you'll want to check with the official sites to find out the exact areas that are encompassed by these fires. We're now looking at the region around Fraser Lake, Burns Lake, and again you can see fire activity on opposing sides of these fire perimeters. We can also see what appears to be uh, control signature infrared uh, that may be part of a strategy to eliminate fuel in uh, advance of uh, some of these fire flanks. This image of the fire near the Nacheco Reservoir, it's showing activity moving northwest and southeast. So as winds buffet back and forth, increased activity. So you want to be aware of your position if you're in any proximity to some of these fire pockets. We've zoomed out looking at the area west of Prince George and now we're going to move a little bit eastwards towards the Rockies, the area around Valmont, uh, Mica Creek. Just a myriad of different terrains, uh, different environments, and each one is posing its own difficulties for crews. The lightning tends to affect more remote areas, and as the lightning has passed through, it's, uh, set, it can have multiple strikes and then smolder within the fuel pockets and have an outbreak uh, several days, perhaps even a week later. We've been rolling over some screens of the southern interior. Please feel free to pause. Uh, and take a closer look at uh, an area of your concern. I'm going to go back to the area that we started around the 70 mile house region and just take a closer look at some of those fire perimeters. Here it's quite clear to see that uh, we have uh, excursions outside on the northwest and a little bit on the south. And another thing to consider is that the area to the east of 70 Mile House did have the Elephant Hill fire go through last year, so there's going to be sections that uh, are burned. However, the fire last year didn't necessarily burn all the fuel. It uh, left pockets and patches very sporadic, and there's going to be fuel areas within there that will be a concern. So please check the official links below Find out uh, where the evacuation alerts and notices are and uh, check your regional district for their updates. Be aware of all your escape routes, north, south, east, west. Have your resources planned ahead of time. We will get through all this, but we have to be careful. So keep your nose to the breeze and thank you very much for watching.